this aquarium is just so big that I can fit in it. This is also a bit more the middle size. This style changed uh, the, the way how people think about uh, aquariums. We went to a lab and this is the electro microscope. This is the Seacam uh, matrix. So even from the plastic, yeah, you will see differences. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and you can see here, this is uh, 1.3 bar, so three meters uh, pressure. The water hardness is around uh, 13 and 14 degrees, which we think is hot. This Stenella pH controller goes to Poland. This is episode 4 of the Live Green Aqua series and today we cover two subjects in one hour just like last time. We will talk about plant fertilizing and water treatment. Hello guys, I'm glad you joined. Uh, this is the fourth episode, we already had three episodes before. The first one was talking about uh, cabinets and uh, aquariums. The second one was talking about the very important subject of filtration. The third one was about water and CO2. If you want to watch these with English and Hungarian subtitles, please make sure that you visit live.greenaqua.com. You will find everything there. Uh, today we are covering a very interesting subject and uh, we have a very distinguished and surprised guest. Uh, it is Mr. Brian Miller from USA, from Seacam USA. So we will welcome him in just a minute. But before we go on, those of you who share this event can win this Seachem plant fertilizing and water treatment package that you can see on this picture. This is a very exclusive package. The total value is about 150 euros. So please share this event if you like it. And at the end of the show, we will have a little lottery here at Green Aqua and uh, you can win one of the two packages, Seachem packages. So as I told you, uh, let's go to the guys because uh, this, this episode uh, will be uh, very... Welcome everyone, this is the upper floor of Green Aqua and uh, today this show will be a bit different with the questions you can ask anything while we are live and we'll try to answer everything. Uh, we have a very special guest today, Brian Miller, Hello. he's the uh, international sales, sales manager from Seachem, a uh, United States company and uh, we also have Victor Lantos from Green Aqua. Uh, Hello guys. They're going to help us today with, uh, with all the fertilizers and all the water care products. And first of all, Brian, where did you come from this time? Because you travel a lot. Well, I was just in South Africa the last two weeks. So I came home for about two days to say hello to wife and family and visit Seachem real quick and back on a plane for Europe. I was in Czech Republic uh, a few days ago and now here in Hungary to see our great friends and supporters, Green Aqua. So it's exciting for Seachem to be here and myself personally as well. So we're humbly honored. Actually, you're here again because again? We, we see you two years ago. Yeah, that's my second visit. It's, we are glad to have you back. Thank you. Um, what do you say, which is the uh, most favorite type of aquarium around the world? Or, or can you specify um, some parts of the world where there is the marine stuff is more popular. Sure, the fresh sure. Stuff. It's and it's vastly different from areas you travel in the world. And sometimes you have a perception and you visit these areas and it's completely opposite. Like all of Asia, they're they're very passionate about freshwater. And most of these areas are islands surrounded by ocean. You would think marine, you know, reef. Wow, hmm, maybe more freshwater. Sometimes it's surprising and other areas you go um, maybe Canada USA Germany you see reef lots of salt water and reef but um, one observation I've made 
there's many popular areas of, of an aquatics hobby, but the planted sector is the fastest growing, in my, in my opinion, from what I've seen. And people are very, very passionate. And I say this in a good way, crazy, good crazy for <laughs> taking things to a high level. So, it, and it's exciting. And education and knowledge is paramount to success for us sharing this hobby we love. Okay, we actually have some pictures uh, now live. Where did, this, uh, where did you take ah, this that's photo? That's uh, Suzuki-san, Aqua Lovers, near Narita, Japan, which is outside of Tokyo. And <laughs> that's our South American sales manager, Paolo Sergio, and myself at a Seachem Select Dealer event where we have many shops from around America and the world gather once a year in Orlando, Florida. And we're a lighthearted family company. So this was Interzoo, uh, 2016 at our stand. Yes, yeah, Germany last year. We yeah, there actually. Nuremberg, Germany. Um, this is with um, some fun with our, uh, the owner of our distributor, Reef Industries in, in Manila, Philippines, Eric Fabico. And we have, not only is it just conducting business, Manila? but we form Manila. We have lifelong relationships and partnerships. And, ah, okay. But this was, uh, we always will take maybe a day to relax. And we work very strong, maybe 10 days straight. And one day in between sometime we'll have a fun day to relax. Okay. But Yeah, that's Greece, I guess. That is. That was in, yeah, that was in Greece. About two years ago, three <coughs> years ago. I was a little thinner there. <laughs> <laughs> this was up near Fukushima in Japan. And this fellow was a very wonderful uh, marine keeper. This is a beautiful uh, marine shop. I went in there with visit to Okabe-san uh, of LSS Laboratory in Tokyo, and they're our distributor there. And yes, we're experiencing Japanese cuisine is wonderful. <laughs> it's great. And here's some more shops. I believe this is a pet balloon near Osaka. And we see the title filter in the background there. <laughs> Oh yeah. my goodness, there's this so many places. This taken here. This is in this Actually, is this Hungary, is here. Yeah. years ago, yeah. Yeah, I was looking at that. Like, time goes fast. Yeah. It's also Hungary again. This yeah. is from your last visit. Yeah. Hungarian culture. And, and for me, it's also a wonderful thing, not only to experience and interact with hobbyists around the world, but also cultures of the different nations. It's, it's very, very special, very, very important. Oh, we know these guys. Yeah, we know these guys. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> this was on my recent visit in uh, February to, this was um, Hyderabad in India. And this gentleman is uh, one of our new sub-distributors for that area. And we're visiting his little warehouse area. And that's Saikot Mighty. And we're here in uh, Chennai, Chennai, India. Oh, that looks like a very special shop. Yeah, and it was, it was <laughs> a day off. Different. We had a day off and we were just touring the little market stalls that they have. Oh, okay. And people have a, they're very um, innovative and, and improvise and find a way to do things. Wow, look at that. <laughs> yeah, and you'll find shops. They're from very humble appearances on the outside. And you go inside and you'll see beautifully kept aquariums. So oh. I learned long ago, never judge a shop from the outside mm -hmm. when you go in and this was in uh, Dublin Ireland about two years ago in Dublin Ireland I try to remember real quick here we are back we're in Japan again this is so many places <laughs> it's Tokyo yeah now uh, we were waiting at a traffic signal and there's these little uh, school kids and I waved at them and, and they looked at me and saw the camera and just started waving <laughs> That's Korea, that's Seoul, South Korea. <coughs> that here is in Sabah in uh, Borneo, the Malaysia part of Borneo, and as after a seminar. Our good friend at Art Harvest Fish. That's Eric Fabico, and the gentleman in the middle is Elaine C. from <laughs> Cebu, Piper's Pet World. Very, very wonderful Seachem supporter. Is well, it, they're guarding the fish with uh, guns. <laughs> there's a bank next door. There's a bank next yeah. door in the Philippines. There's high levels of security, just yeah, yeah. the nature of society yeah, that absolutely. they're very cautious to be. This was a wonderful seminar that we just gave in Cagayan de Oro in the Philippines. And the hobbyists are just marvelous. Ralph Tanchino, and, uh, owner of Pet World, and this is the newest shop in Manila. And you, you can see a wonderful, wonderful Seachem supporter. 
and many friends at Interzoo. We have South Africa and we have Holland and some of the Seachem staff, our sales director. Looks like you have a lot uh, of friends. Uh, yeah. It's, one, it's a big family. <laughs> on a visit with Eric Fabico in the Philippines, we hiked up Mount Pinatubo. Of course, I regretted that for two days because I was so <laughs> sore. <laughs> Barrett Schutman, a wonderful, wonderful man who's doing a lot for the proper collection and conservation of reefs in the Philippines and interacting and doing things with local levels of government to embrace the knowledge and to help secure the future of the hobby. Ah, okay, and they, they were waiting for you with this. Yeah, awesome. yeah, I was so surprised, but a big shout out to Barrett Schutman. He's a okay. wonderful man. We were waiting for you with this <laughs> one. <laughs> I don't know so much about the, the what's there on the bottom, but... <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> that was outside in Doha, Qatar. We were traveling. And that would be in Qatar. That's Green Aqua. Kevin Tan. And we're in South Africa. This was just last week. Flying around all over South Africa. We go... That's T.D. Masilo, a wonderful, wonderful Seachem supporter and the manager of Bluff Unleashed near Durban, South Africa. Passionate Seachem supporter. Of course, here we're at Pampered Pets. There's Hillcrest. That's Nigel Marlton. This is outside Durban. I think that's probably Japan. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, no. That was Taiwan. That was Taiwan. And this was a little mini shop seminar in Taiwan. What, what is your experience that... Uh, um the, the trend, where, where, where the trend follows. So oh, we'll we, speak yeah. about that picture later. <laughs> <laughs> That's Alcatraz <laughs> prison ago. on a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so what, what, what is the uh, trend? Uh, uh, Vietnam? Sh shops showing more uh, aquariums, so they have more displays or more about the off, uh, kind of an off-the-shelf solution. So well, they, it's a self-service uh, way. What is your experience? I find a complete variety from shop to shop to shop. I'll find some shops that are very heavy on just dry goods, products. Not so many aquariums, mm -hmm. and a little bit of aquariums. Not so many of those, but most shops will have some balance between products and aquariums. And then I've seen a lot of shops recently, they're more of a batik style, very heavy on displays and inspiration, mm -hmm. showing people how to do things correctly, education centers and workshops. And there will be a smaller amount of products displayed, but they'll have a large inventory yeah, yeah. elsewhere. But uh, there's, there's all types would be the answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. I talked too much. Okay. Uh, do you have some anecdotes, some fun stories from your travels? For example, that uh, picture in the prison. It's uh, <laughs> something we should talk about. I think. That was actually on vacation with my lovely wife, Melissa Miller. We went to San Francisco. And everyone who knows me knows that I'll never uh, miss an opportunity for a laugh or a humorous moment. And, I, and when she wasn't looking, I jumped around into the cell and popped through it. And <laughs> so she took a picture, but she was telling me to come out as quick as possible. So. <laughs> she was worried so actually, I might keep you there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she said, man, I might want to leave you here. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Um, one last question about your travels and uh, actually about us. How would you compare? How would you uh, compare our store to the sure. the, the other you okay. see? I was just telling Blash earlier. I've been very very lucky and blessed with to work with Seachem, a family-owned company like Seachem, who are all true hobbyists and have a deep care and love for the future and the present of this hobby based in education, and that takes me around the world. That's the mission of our company, is to travel the world, visit shops, see how we can help. Not marketing jargon, but how we can offer products and solutions for the success of all of us as hobbies. Okay. And, uh, how, oh, yeah. how was it born? How was the company itself born? We know, oh, yeah. we know the headquarters is sure. in uh, Atlanta. We're near, we're near Atlanta, Georgia, in a small town, and our company was born back in the 70s with Dr. Leo Morin, our founder. He was a, a professor of pathology and organic chemistry in Emory University and an avid hobbyist, just an avid hobbyist. And back at that time, there was no products available or if they were, they weren't formulated so well or very vague, non-scientific. So he began to using his knowledge uh, we we yeah. can actually see him yeah. on, the, on the screen yeah. right now. Yeah. Dr. Morin would use his knowledge in chemistry and also his love for the hobby and formulate products in his house. Not for selling, but for trading, going to shop to shop to trade for fish and corals. 
And that's how we began, not for making money, but for improving the hobby. And eventually shops would ask him, wow, can we please buy it? Yeah, we, you know? can, we can see your headquarters. <laughs> yeah, here. So, so that's, that's an uh, explanation why uh -huh. uh, Seacam is, uh, is kind of, it looks like a lab focused company. Yes, we have full research lab. From, yeah. uh, from an average uh, yeah. kind of industry player. So it's. Yeah, we're not a marketer, we're a true researcher. Um, we have, uh, we do all the research, production, manufacture, and our facility you see here, built, purpose built in 2005, and before we had outgrow, we've outgrown several facilities over the years. We've been in business for 36 years now, and uh, so we have a biological lab, chemistry lab, you know, production lab, everything is strict quality control, five highly automated production lines, you see. So we see yeah. some big pictures here about the production. Sure. Uh, can, can you talk a, a bit about how, how uh, when, a, when a new development is coming or a new product is sure. coming into mm -hmm. uh, Skip, so how, how we should imagine? Uh, yeah, because it's kind of a really fun yeah. organic process. Um, the, the, the Seachem staff, we travel all th worldwide, globally, and, and through America, and we're interactive with shops we're all the time. Our owners at Seachem are visiting shops all the time. And us sellers as hobbyists, we all have aquariums at Seachem. This is our life. We interact with shops and customers, and we're always between ourselves and seeing needs in the hobbies and listening, listening to you as a hobbyist. We gather ideas and inspiration, and we can combine that with our laboratory and our, our research skills, and that's how products are born. And then many times, products or research for many, many years before they're ready. We will never rush a product to the market that's not thoroughly researched, beta tested. Um, we're not a fad company. We're very, very careful that when we finally release a product that it's sound science and chemistry and biology and it equals a great experience to uh, a yeah, fellow you can hobbyist. See, you yeah. can see the lab on the screen right yeah. now. The laboratory's always going. <laughs> <laughs> There's always research going. And these aquariums here are all photos from employee aquariums at Seachem in our offices. You walk through our offices everywhere, you see just beautiful aquariums. We have, we have human resources personnel and accountants that also that weren't hobbyists when they came to Seachem that you'll see some of these photos are their aquariums. We want everybody to know the love and the passion that's yeah. involved with this hobby. Okay, what's the ratio between freshwater and seawater inside the company? Uh, I would say about 70 freshwater, 30 marine, 30% marine. Okay, so but you have more, more fresh water as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have a Tanganyika and cichlids in my aquarium, so <laughs> that's always been a love of mine. I think they just have abundant little personalities, so. Okay, uh, actually we are not only about Seachem today. Sure. Uh, we, we talk about all the type of fertilizers uh, and everything, so please, uh, we should talk about Micro Macro, the green aqua fertilizers, and I'll ask Victor. Uh, the first question is, why do, why do we have two types instead of one? Well, the the uh, uh, the components in the in the fertilizers uh, are usually uh, couldn't mix together, so there will there will be uh, issues with the with the fertilizers keeping on the shelves in the long term. So we're separated out into uh, uh, micro and um, uh, macro uh, fertilizers into a separate uh, bottle. But uh, as you can see. With the, it's uh, the the green aqua uh, micro macro and why we have uh, so many fertilizers here on the desk. Uh, you will see this later on. Uh, and and uh, is there a market for all of them? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, they all coming from a different direction. Some uh, is easy to use and maybe for a slower type of uh, growing. Some others uh, are for. Uh, highlight and kind of um, uh, a fast grower tank um, and and also some uh, maybe maybe shrimp is the uh, is the main part so you you're you're coming from a shrimp, shrimp hobby and you wouldn't like to uh, put in too much fertilizers in it uh, and and then cause problems with the with your shrimp so that's that's the uh, quick explanation why there are multiple choices and multiple philosophy behind all these kind of fertilizers. Green Aqua is is kind of one of the heaviest player uh, in this group. It has a lot of uh, fertilizers. It's uh, especially uh, mixed for uh, uh, kind of a niche uh, hobby market where highlight is used, CO2 is used, 
and, uh, and it's coming from a kind of a, a philosophy of the estimative index, what uh, actually Tom Barr from USA mm -hmm. yeah. uh, dreamed about and, uh, and uh, figured out. So that's, that's about the micro macro. Okay, so actually you can see the micro macro uh, fertilizers here. You can find them in our shop. And uh, well, let's compare this to, for say, uh, ADA fertilizers. So how, how is it different? It's 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 a completely different uh, fertilizer, and, and and if yeah we are talking about the different uh, fertilizers, it's important to mark that it's not a good thing to mix uh, the fertilizers because they are built on a, uh, on a philosophy or a way how uh, a lab. Uh, figure it out the, 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 the dosage for the different kind of uh, fertilizers, so it's not a great idea to mix them. Uh, ADA fertilizer line is, uh, is also built for uh, high light and CO2 uh, driven aquariums, but there the, uh, the nitrate and phosphate is very low. So it's, uh, it's more about on a kind of a safe side, I would say, easier to balance probably, but you need to uh, those uh, the fertilizers every day so it's kind of uh, you, you couldn't be lazy with this kind of fertilizers if, if it's on a lean line okay yeah uh, actually you know some about the idea I guess you guys uh, oh yeah do there's research, research about the uh, well there's a stuff. high respect for ADA amongst the world with hobbyists and fellow manufacturers at I think Takashi Amano being a master of aquascaping gave great inspiration to hobbyists around the world and really, I think it catapulted, well, everyone knows, it just catapulted the popularity of the hobby. And, uh, and it's made it special for many people. And there's passion, of course, there's passionate aquascapers around the world of all different influences. And we have passionate aquascapers and masters throughout America as well. And, but there's, a, there's a high respect amongst most companies and it gives us all an opportunity to share information, grow together as hobbyists, because at the end of the day, that's our goal is to grow this hobby, push it forward and enjoy it. It's fun. It's a fun thing to do. So. Absolutely. Okay. Now, we, well, we also have some uh, other types. Uh, we chose Easy Life and uh, Tropica fertilizers to, to compare to these stuff. Uh, Victor, please tell us how, how they work. Uh, Easy Life and, and, uh, uh, and the Tropica Fertilizer line is coming uh, as a, a kind of for a, a general use for a, a general uh, aquarist and uh, plant uh, keepers or aquarist. Uh, of course, uh, the, the Dutch manufacturer also has uh, other components, so you can separately dose uh, nitrate, phosphate, irons, but uh, what the what the core components is the the, the Profito. Uh, in that line, uh, the tropical line is, is uh, uh, it's it's about how the companies have tried to explain their fertilizers to the end user. So they have two uh, solution. One is for uh, a dense planted tank, and one is for for um, just an average uh, aquarium. They both have a different needs, so they have two fertilizers to address this need. Okay, what would you recommend for a total beginner and what would you recommend for a pro? For a beginner where there are usually no CO2 or maybe an average uh, uh, light, I would say most of the aquarium kits are belong to this group and uh, this is a very large number of uh, aquarist uh, people in the world. So I would, I would start with, a, with a, a simple fertilizers uh, like, uh, like with the uh, uh, well, actually, you can start with with any of them, but uh, but you need to take care of if you're dosing, uh, if you're using a heavy fertilizers or uh, uh, very dense fertilizers, you need to dose leaner. If you're uh, uh, dosing a lean fertilizer uh, from the start, uh, you have a possibility to to add in more as the plants grow, then you will have more plant mass. Okay. Uh, well, then let's get to Seekin right okay. now because we have Ryan here. Actually, you guys can win uh, a package today. Uh, if you share this live event on Facebook, you can get uh, a package worth of 150 euros. And actually two people are going to get this kind of package. So please share if you like our stuff. Uh, okay, let's start with the obvious. Your line of fertilizers, it's sure. pretty complicated. <laughs> 
Well, maybe at a glance, but when you actually, when we share the knowledge and visit shops and explain to people, it's actually very, very intuitive, very easy to use, very easy to employ. Most of the dosing is, the cap is a 5 ml cap, and each thread is 1 ml. And most of the dosing recommendations are so many mLs for so many liters, so many times a week, as a starting point. Our dosing generally is all a starting point dosing, depending on the, the planted level, the bio load of the aquarium, you may reduce the dosing. Most people will reduce the dosing a little bit. Yeah, you can see, you can yeah. see on the screen the, the dosing with the cup, actually. Yeah, so it's quite easy to use. The instructions are very easy. We have a new, ra the range has been relabeled with uh, points on. Yes, the packaging is very nice. Yeah. So you would see um, exactly what it's for and how it's to be employed. And we, offer, we have an extensive range, yes, but hobbyist to hobbyist, you don't need everything for success. It's about scenarios or needs that may arise that come and go based on each and every in hobbyist individual needs. So we have an answer. Everything's rooted again in a lot of research into the biology of the plant, of the aquatic plant, not terrestrial plant. Yeah and specifically formulated products that are for the hobby, not byproducts from garden industry. Um, so you'll get very, very good effect, uptake strategy of the plant, the biological functions. Everything's been addressed through proper research in biology and then the appropriate chemistry and science applied. Okay, there's a very special way you, you, uh, you talk about and you deal with iron. Sure. It's, it's totally different than any other company. Yeah, this so is exciting. Why do you do it? We, we know <laughs> that iron uh, is needed for the rat plants mostly, but why sure. is it different? Okay. Yeah. Well, for years and years and years of what we found available to the hobbyist, and even today, are products with chelated iron, or EDTA, bound with EDTA, or, or you could say it's a ferric iron. It's a Fe3 plus oxidation state. Well, that is good for terrestrial plants plants up taking nutrients through the roots only in the soil. And so these products are then generally relabeled or rebottled as bypro from byproducts of the terrestrial plant industry and put in products for the hobby. Well, maybe 40 years ago, that was only what we knew. That was the limitation of our knowledge. And years of extensive study at CCAM and, and, and others in collaboration, we understand the biology of the, of the aquatic plant being a foliar feeder. Aquatic plants uptake nutrients, stem, leaf, and root, and including the iron. And what a lot of people don't know is iron is immobile in the structure of a plant. If a plant takes an iron in the roots, it can't transport it to stem and leaf. It takes in the stem or the leaf, it can't transport to other areas. So, understanding the biology of the aquatic plant, we know that a ferrous form of iron, a 2 plus oxidation state, is what aquatic plants uptake in the wild. So, and it's much less energy to uptake mm -hmm. because it's the state, it's the oxidation state that the plants can use. So, in the flourish range, flourish, flourish iron, we employ a ferrous form of iron, two plus state. It can be uptaken by the stem, leaf, and root easily. And so no extra um, energy is required to um, break it down, mm -hmm. to use it. And what happens when a plant saves energy? It transfers to vibrant green, full growth. Um, so it's, it's really exciting. And, and really, none of it was rocket science. Yeah. It was just having a good understanding of the biology of the plant and not using shortcuts or byproducts from other industries and really taking the hobby to the next levels. And the results are so exciting. We're just, we're seeing growth and things in plants, just higher levels. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's fun. And this, yeah. this is yeah. This is typically uh, why um, where C can 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 come back with, uh, the, with the power of the lab. Uh, Absolutely. Background, so. Absolutely. We're always researching, moving forward, and uh, it's a powerful thing. Knowledge and education for the hobbyist to us is paramount. Yeah, and producing the highest quality product without shortcuts or extra dilutions, we don't do that. We want the maximum best best results to ignite that passion in the hobbyists so they stay in the hobby and get more tanks yeah, yeah. you know get more and, plants yeah, that's more fish goal, to have more success absolutely plants. and it's exciting it is, it's a fun exciting um, industry or hobby can, <laughs> so. can, can we talk about the new product or the yeah uh, yeah we should talk about the advance it's okay actually a novelty from the flourish range all right flourish advance flourish advance is a natural phytohormone 
growth phytohormone from a plant. And what this is, we can isolate that and formulate that with some nutrients. And it helps accelerate growth in the root area, the root zone. Mm -hmm. And this is wonderful for new, t new aquariums, new setups, or transplants. Or maybe you have a diseased or stressed plant and you yeah. want to encourage the growth. After trimming it. Sure. So using this, it's going to help that root, accelerate the root growth. And then after two weeks, approximate, maybe three weeks, you'll start seeing that growth push over the stem and leaf. And it's wonderful. Now this is not your main nutrient, whereas Flourish will be the main nutrient source yeah, or yeah. comprehensive. But we do have nutrients in the formula to, off, that, to meet the needs of that increased growth that this product's affecting. But very, very exciting and it will be very, very critical for certain times in the life of that aquarium or certain scenarios and the results have been amazing. And this product we've researched for many, many years, many years before we release and the, even the results we've been seeing. So it's also important, benefits. it's not a replacement of the, of the base Correct. fertilizer. Correct, it's, it's not a replacement. Correct. To have better growth overall. Correct. Overall. Flourish will be your base fertilizer. Well, for your supplement, your comprehensive supplement, vitamins, amino acids, trace elements, everything for appropriate root or plant growth and development, including the ferrous iron that we spoke about, the appropriate form for aquatic plants. What is your recommendation to an average hobby to 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 follow the uh, direction uh, on on the label or uh, measure because you're coming mm -hmm. from a lab uh, sure. focused company so measure the tanks okay. or just, just check the plants and sure. increase the dosage so well we've taken that into account along with product formulation research that takes many years sometimes there's quite a long time if not years in researching the correct dosing and application sometimes that's even longer yeah. And so we put a great amount of research into the, into the formulation and we've developed that to a way where this is a very easy delivery for beginner or expert hobbyist. It doesn't matter. Um, we have, again, the dosing is a starting range. Mm -hmm. So most people are going to back down a little bit from that. And of course you, you dose and you observe and see if you need to dose more or less, monitor your levels, so forth. Um, but the products, all present a high uh, concentration of nutrients and value to the customer. So most people will dose a little less than what we recommended. You might find some people with a very, very heavy load of plants that may need to dose more sometimes. Okay, uh, we actually have a question sure. online. Uh, someone is asking if uh, the Purigen, the filter media that we spoke uh -huh. about in a few weeks ago, uh, does it remove any of the fertilizers no. from the waters? So no. Phosphate or nitrates or anything? It sure doesn't. These are small molecule organic nutrients. Purigen is going to remove the large molecule organics. So that was taken into consideration. And that's a really wonderful feature about Purigen. Again, again, about Purigen will not remove trace elements, supplementations for corals or plants. It only takes out nitrogenous waste, excess organic waste. So good question. A uh, very, very good question. Thank you. Purigen is, is I think, one of the most popular sea can products. And Indeed it is. Water clarity, yeah, and you can use it in marine or from fresh water. Sure. So. Yeah, okay, um, and what do you guys, uh, how do you see the fertilizers and the algae uh, in okay. version? so how do they connect? Okay, I kind of look, there's several ways to approach that and most people, if the, e the answer is quite easy. If you eat too much on an ongoing basis, you get fat. If you dose too much for your aquarium based on the amount of plants and uptake speed that you have, then you'll start seeing excess organics and algae growth. Okay. That is a more basic layman's type answer. For, the, for most everybody can grasp that analogy. And then moving forward, there's things, nitrogen to phosphorus ratio. Maintain that five to one in your aquarium and only plants can uptake nitrogen to phosphorus and then algae cannot and dies off. So between light management, proper husbandry, between using purigen, for example, removing excess organics, in advance, it'll prevent ammonia spike, nitrite spike, nitrate spike. So proper husbandry, do your water changes, light management, uh, watch your silicates and phosphates. So then you have PhosGuard or PhosNet, PhosBond, things like Seachem. We offer several different yeah, types. Yeah, many kind of filter, filter products, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move on to the aquatic soils. So how we use fertilizers uh, in the bottom of the aquarium, not in the water itself. 
Yeah, when we are actually we are, well, when we are starting a new aquarium, it's easy to to use some kind of uh, uh, substrate and uh, and the soil uh, on top of that. Soil is is uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, yeah. And on the on the picture, we can see the 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 the, the root sticks. It, this is this is the other part. When when there the, you have a matured aquarium and uh, the the substrate is run out of the nut nutrients, uh, you easily can. Uh, can add in more nutrients to the soil. Uh, here we used an ADA uh, uh, bottom uh, stick to, to dose in some, some iron, especially these carpeting plants are really uh, sucking up the nutrients from the soil. So even if you dose the right amount of uh, liquid fertilizers to your aquarium, it's important to, to think about the, the substrate fertilization also. Substrate, uh, if, if uh, the aquarium is a, a matured one, usually you need to repeat the, uh, the, the taps, the, the root sticks after every two or three months, depend on the, on the, on the plant uh, usage or the plant mass you have. Okay, thank you. Um, we have another question, again I got about Purigen. So yeah. As Victor said, it's one of the most popular products. It certainly is. Uh, yeah. Now it's about uh, if they remove uh, any medicine, if, we, if you treat uh, mm. uh, a disease after it, mm -hmm. can, it can you use it instead of uh, carbon to remove the residue of the medicine? No, um, we would not recommend Purigen for that. Um, Activated carbon yeah, generally okay. is considered the best, most effective way to remove the medication. Also, at the, yeah, at the medication problem. Yeah. Um, Purigen won't have an effect on the medication. Mm -hmm. um, okay. you, it should not be a problem. But, okay. uh, right. Activated carbon is the, the best, bar none, to, yeah. okay. in our humble opinions. <laughs> okay, uh, we are done with the fertilizers uh, and the soils. Now we should take on to the water treatment uh, side of things. So that's totally another line of products and we get back to ADA. So please, Victor, uh, tell us about the water treatment uh, products of ADA. It, uh, usually if you're using tap water, then, then uh, kind of a dechlorinator need to be used and it's recommended for your flesh, uh, fish and, and uh, filtered bacteria also. Uh, what else we are uh, using, we, uh, we use some kind of uh, growth hormone sometimes, uh, like the, uh, the advance, but uh, uh, we also add in some, some bacterial uh, products. So on the ADA range, it's Chlorof uh, is the way to go. Actually, they are uh, just uh, redoing their fertilizer and uh, water care uh, products. So it may be the name will change in the next few months on some of the, uh, these items, but uh, uh, the Chlorof, Green gain is uh, is the their uh, growth uh, uh, hormone uh, product and uh, and the, the bacterial side uh, you can use the green bacter or uh, Doctor Ball uh, Bacter 100 is for the startup so that's uh, that's about the the water care yeah we can see on the screen the uh, green aqua web shop with the, uh, the water care products. It's actually green bacteria yeah, from ADA right bacter. now. We are, we are using this product uh, after every kind of a filter, cleaning or larger water changes, larger maintenance. So uh, uh, kind of a, a bacterial treatment is, uh, is a good idea to, to have uh, after every uh, few weeks or so to, to have the best uh, filtration in your aquarium. Okay. Then again, back to Seacom, uh, and again, a bit of complicated lineup from the product. Uh, you, you have a lot of liquids to treat our water. So please uh, tell us how we okay. should use them and what's the difference between these products. Again, I would very humbly beg that uh, they're actually quite non-complicated <laughs> and very simple and straightforward to use between beginner and expert. Um, first, and we also have some special product which yes. no one has, like um, the pristine. Pristine, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, of course, everyone knows Prime. Yep. Um, 5 mLs treats 200 liters, very, very concentrated, and also many extra uh, features. Of course, it removes chlorine, chloramine, and reduces or chloramine chemical liters free ammonia, or ammonia is created. Prime will bind to a non-toxic form of ammonia. And also in an emergency state, you can use extra dosing on Prime on the label um, to bind uh, a, a toxic situation that may have occurred in your aquarium. It detoxifies nitrite, nitrate, uh, 
removes heavy metals. It helps encourage a fish to produce a slime coat through the mucus layer naturally. So there's no slime in the bottle. It won't overactivate a protein skimmer. Good for fresh water, salt water, plant tank, reef tank. Um, this is quite the world leader in every market we've entered and moved into prime. Most people more and more will know this. It's a very special one. Yeah, very special. <laughs> and then stability. I was just to sure. for the prime, sorry. It's, yeah. a, it's not a live question, actually. Oh, it's okay. a question we get a lot of times. Prime has a very distinctive it scent. It is the smell of success. Yeah, some, some people oh, think okay. it's, it's already <laughs> gone bad when they open it. Okay. So it needs Please, some explanation. Okay. Very, very important to note. There's no organics in the formula of Prime. It's completely inorganic, mineral-based formula. And hydrosulfite salts are part of this um, formula. Yep. And what you or your, or your hobbyist may smell is um, uh, the hydrosulfite salt. And it's a, a natural, inorganic odor that quickly dissipates once being mixed. Sometimes people might mistaken it for something else, but it's completely harmless, completely fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Uh, going, uh, moving forward here to stability, another top seller in the range along with Prime, this is our biological, our bacterial product. We released this to the market in 2003 after almost 10 years worth of research. We wanted to research and isolate strains of aquatic specific bacteria, not using enzymatic type products or, non, or terrestrial based bacteria. When you do that, that it affects for a more powerful strains of bacteria that are highly adaptive to aerobic and anaerobic conditions, nitrite spikes, ammonia spikes. These bacteria can adapt and handle the, pro the, pro the problem at hand instead of dying off in mass like non-aquatic spe uh, specific bacteria. So highly resilient, good for freshwater, saltwater, plant tank, reef tank, cycling aquarium, aquariums weren't increased to bio load, or aquariums maybe had to use medication. There's a monthly dose as well. Um, quite popular in the range stability and it's just keeping up the times researching all the time finding strains of bacteria that are better for the hobby not just sitting back using strains of bacteria mm. that were employed 40 years ago because we didn't know any better so we're just moving forward stability and then there's a very very exciting new product released last year called pristine this is completely different than stability there, we research strains of bacteria here that have a different strategy of, called re remediation. Pristine is to consume biomass or excess byproduct from the cycling process. So black sludge or debris that you see collecting in your aquarium, this will be for an established aquarium. And it'll put that pristine polished look back on your aquarium like when it was new. So this is a very, very important second step in biological management stability for the cycling and maintaining of your cycle of the aquarium, and pristine for the byproducts that result. Both strains of bacteria don't affect the other. This will not cycle an aquarium. This is gonna consume those byproducts. Mm -hmm. So indeed, something actually truly new, we just didn't relabel. And you'll see a lot of relabeling going on in the industry of certain things inside the bottle when it's not entirely beneficial to the hobbyist. So pristine, give it a try, uh, the feedback I'm not in the often very much on the office very much, maybe four days a month. But when I'm there, I can hear the, the feedback to our tech support, our biologists, and it's quite amazing the results that we've seen. Of course, we tested it for years as well and researched for years. Um, I can we, talk. We forever. also have a lot of positive feedbacks on this. That's one. great to hear. Yeah, it's. Yeah. It's something else. Before we go to the last one, the clarity, sure. uh, there's another question online, and I think this is a good question for both of you guys. Okay. Uh, it's about when should we start to use fertilizers after uh, setting up a new tank? And I think it differs at yeah. sea chem than at our... Uh, our um, I will speak to 10 different aquatic plant hobbyists and possibly get 10 different opinions and answers. No one's right or wrong. But generally, once you've you've set up your aquarium you obviously you want a very good substrate like fluorites or a good soil we also offer aquasolum from aqua vitro um, so a good soil a substrate good lighting and then of course a comprehensive supplement like fluorite i would begin dosing almost immediately but of course in very small quantities start with the recommended dose and watch be careful step by step some other people may have a philosophy of waiting a certain time. So difficult question, but that's how I would humbly recommend myself. So. Okay, and what, what uh, how 
often do you recommend the water changes at the start of the tank? Because that's also something we, sure. we recommend very uh, daily water changes in the beginning. But I think with, with you saying you should use less fertilizers in the start. Yeah, you'll get different different answers. So on you're this helping one as well. with the filtration media on the cycling uh, process. Yeah, like using more. stability, you're going to these strains of bacteria are all active within three seconds to three hours, um, and working and doing their job. So far as water change, you'll get many different answers on that as well. Myself, the first week, I try not to mess with it too much. <laughs> okay, I would probably do a little 15% uh, water change after a week, but that's my opinion. And everyone will have a varying little opinion on it, but the key in, in the very initial beginning is not to be drastic with anything. Be very careful and very measured step-by-step -step approach. Generally, will keep you in a safe zone. Yeah, I, th I think that's for the, the kind of a general uh, way to yeah. go. And yeah. then, uh, if you're rushing, uh, and uh, probably these uh, most of the aquascapes, what we are, we are seeing is uh, people are rushing the growth. So right. uh, putting too much light, uh, too much love, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> too much love, too much light. Filling the tank with love. <laughs> and 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 the water change is required uh, at the beginning sure. to remove all the waste, uh, which is there because, because the plants are transforming, dropping its leaves. And your biological is not established. Yeah. yeah, there could be certain scenarios where, unfortunately, they did not purchase correct amounts of biological or mechanical filtration, and the bacteria has not seeded up like it should, and then of course certain scenarios then would dictate maybe a larger or quicker water change in turn so back back uh, to the question just uh, for for a minute on the uh, when to start the fertilizers it at uh, the market is changed in the past few years and uh, we see more and more laboratory plants and yes. these plants are young and they are sitting in a liquid solution with full with fertilizer so uh, when I talk with Tropica and, and uh, other experts, they recommend to, to, to dose the, uh, the fertilizers from the beginning because of that. Mm -hmm. So this is a very young plant, couldn't store that much fertilizers at the beginning. It's not like uh, the other which is uh, coming from a, from a, a nursery a or, or a sure. pot and, and, and grows for, for weeks in a sure. environment. So that's, uh, it depends on what kind of uh, plants you're using. If you're using a lab, laboratory plants, then uh, better to, to dose uh, at the beginning. If you're using a general plants, then uh, probably after a week or two yeah. or something, that it's, it's a good way. Quite an exciting area. And, and Seachem has recently partnered up with um, Esther Moos of Akvenova in the Netherlands. So cheers to Esther. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, <sir. laughs> Okay, let's let's get back to the last one of the uh, water care products, the clarity. Yes. Please okay. Tell us about it. Quite straightforward. This is a flocculant. It will take smaller particles and clump them to larger particles, so your your mechanical filtration can and can uh, pull out of the water. And if it's a biological type clouding, it will relocate that clouding, the bacteria, to the surface of your biomedia. Now. It's completely different in regards to it's not a potassium permanganate, and it doesn't have limitations of only addressing one or two types of cl uh, cloudiness. We have bacterial, biological, particulate, chemical types of uh, clouding. Clarity will address them all. So no matter what is affecting the clouding, Clarity will clarify it. Now, of course, we recommend with our customers have good mechanical filtration, and again, in the case of a biological clouding, good uh, biological media such as matrix matrix would be a key product to use hand in hand with a product like clarity or stability uh, and it's good again fresh water salt water plant tank reef tank uh -huh. so again you don't have to seek out and search different bottles and different formulations this this will handle all types of clouding no matter what aquatic environment you have so very safe and effective so we know it's going to handle the problem and of course, us as counselors to our customers and fellow hobbyists, we want to find out what's causing the clouding. We're actively working, what is causing it? And we solve that. Of course, in the meantime, we would like to have a nice clear aquarium. So clarity, very, very effective, very easy, very safe to use. Yeah, many, many people think that if they are set up um, uh, a filtration with the biomedia and, and uh, 
and uh, a simple uh, four minute is enough to, to clear up the aquarium. But sometimes it's not working. No, and not even, at all. even uh, there are people who are using pyrogen and they see cloudy water and then uh, and then uh, so these uh, uh, the, the yeah. products like Clarity comes mm -hmm. very yeah. handy in that. So it's something else what pyrogen. And, and the yeah, pyrogen is going to remove the organics. Yeah, it's clearing up the yeah. water, but it's not clearing up the... the yeah, if you have a particular box. clouding or yeah. a biological clouding, you're going to need something like a flocculant like Clarity. Yeah. Whereas, then again, of course, pyrogen will remove um, tannins and color discoloration. If you uh, look on... Hey, you Facebook guys, if you go to Ideas Marinas, and they're in Mexico, look up the Ideas Marinas. And you'll see a video on there where they put Purigen on an aquarium, clean, clearing it out with deep tannins from driftwood. It's exciting. So Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and there's a question about clarity that we get a lot. Uh, if you need to clean uh, your filtration after using it or not? I would recommend. I would, because uh, being a flocculant, again, that mechanical filtration is going to catch all of that. Uh, have that debris and it's going to collect on uh, your actually, filter cloth. Actually, we have this on the screen the site you mentioned. Oh, ah, okay. Ideas Marinas. Ideas Marinas. This is our Ideas Marinas is our long time, highly honored and valued partner, Serafina Laminara in Mexico, and wonderful distributor. He's a brother. He's a member of our fan, the Seachem family, and he's a marine biologist and is another passionate promoter of the hobby. So, cheers to Serafina Laminara and. <laughs> Rodolfo and everyone in Mexico. So. <laughs> okay, let's get to the marine stuff. This is a yeah, part where we, sure. we have to take your word for it because okay. we're not at home in this topic. But <laughs> uh, please be honest. Uh, why why is the, the Seekin products better than any other? How how is it different than uh, the other stuff on the market? Uh, well, let's, I, let's start sure. with the with the salt itself. Sure, it's the basis of the marine. We industry. have um, salinity from Aquavitra reef salt, and just released this year, very exciting, is Vibrant Sea reef salt from Seekin. And both these salts employ um, anhydrous components, so meaning devoid of moisture. Waters of hydration, there's none. So when you, when you batch a salt, it's done by weight. So when you're formulating and batching a salt as a manufacturer, and some of your components have certain levels of displacement of water within, it's going to show that you've batched correctly by weight, but in effect, water has displaced components and then you'll have a salt that will mix up erratically. So the customer will use a salt and not get consistent mix or at parameter. So using anhydrous salts or components in salinity from Aquavitro and vibrant sea reef salt from Seachem, the customer, your hobbyist, will get absolute consistent mix every time at parameters that we guarantee on the packaging. Um, high levels of uh, mineral content that you need for uh, coral growth and development, colors that are outstanding, um, and it's a much more stable way to go, especially automatic dose, people using automatic dosing on supplements, and, or even if you're just getting a good dosing regimen, if you have a high quality reef salt like Salinity or Vibrant C, it keeps that stability in that environment, because generally the water change is the most traumatic event to the life of yeah. any established uh, reef right. yeah. you know so when you have a sea salt or reef salt it's just dead on with their parameters that would be the advantage that i would explain about our, our reef salts is again and it's all research-based learning interactive research always moving and forward the development of absolutely yeah. and, and then our reef range our aquavitro reef range and the seachem reef range years of research no no cutting of corners no extra dilution we will, we will research things 360 degrees. These products will affect benefits without creating trade-offs or, or bad effects. So um, our seachem.com, www.seachem.com or aquavitro.com, wonderful websites, very concise information explaining. Oh, we can see it on the screen now. Sure, explaining. That's our new title filter we're doing in partnership with Seacha. Yeah. Okay, uh, if, you, if you have to pick one product from the reef range, from the marine range, uh, which would be it? Which is your favorite? Which is the... the Personally, uh, my favorite would be thing. Reef Complete Calcium from the Seachem Reef mm -hmm. Range. Is, well, there's two. And also Fuel from Aquavitro. That, so I'll talk about Seachem Reef Complete first. What's really great about Reef Complete, it's 160,000 milligram per liter of 
in concentration, in solution, totally 100% usable for your coral. It allows you to raise your, uh, it's an ionic calcium, allows you to raise your calcium level in your aquarium, but it also has calcium, magnesium, to strontium ratio formulated and set correctly. And that was the biggest challenge for a lot of new reef keepers was using separate products and testing to maintain that ratio. Why is it important? Well, for every 100 ppm or 100 milligrams per liter of calcium a coral uptakes, it needs 5 milligrams per liter magnesium, 0.1 strontium. We do that for you. We do that for the hobbyist. So beginners and experts alike will use Reef Complete Calcium. It has that ratio. It gets you out of the gate, gets you having great success. And then when you learn more down the line as a reef keeper, sometimes you want to use different magnesiums and strontium separately based on scenario and needs and different testings, of course, all about newer challenges. But Reef Complete is so fundamentally important, I believe, in, in setting up the, the reef keeper for initial success. And then on the aqua vitro side, fuel, fuel, fuel. <laughs> <laughs> fuel from aqua vitro is an exciting product that employs long-term research from Seachem of using the nutrients from chlorella, chlorella algae. Everyone knows spirulina, but chlorella is many, many, many times, uh, contains higher levels of nutrients, many, many times versus spirulina. Natural coral tissue building blocks, vitamins, amino acids, uh, fatty acids, carbohydrates, uh, trace elements, everything for beautiful, amazing colors is the big thing you'll see using fuel and growth. And fuel is just rocketed, is the most popular product of all the aqua vitro. So if, if you're a reef keeper out there and want to see colors that are off the charts, you, you definitely, um, I'll humbly recommend, maybe not so humbly, <laughs> uh, fuel. Okay, yeah, Maybe we're going to have yeah. to check that. Okay, Marine, Marine is, 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 a, is a larger part to cover, and we don't have in, enough time to do that. But uh, maybe one one more thing is the one of the latest products is uh, the uh, the reef plankton and phytoplankton. Yes. I think maybe we can fit sure. this in. So if uh, can can you talk sure, a bit absolutely. about it? Because when we started to use it on uh, on our aquarium, that uh, all of the corals just polyp blew up. expansion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looks amazing. Since all right. Now. Well, that's something we looked at again, uh, phytoplankton, zooplankton, phytoplankton. We saw on the market for years, companies would sell a bottled by, uh, plankton. But we found the organic content in these types of products was very, very high, and, and most of it was not usable to the coral. So you had to put a lot of, inner, or, a lot of organic content just to gain some nutrition for the coral. That wasn't necessary an answer, so we wouldn't do that. We would not produce one. And then you have some live planktons that come onto the market where a good step forward, but they're generally lower nutrient density and there's logistic problems as far as refrigeration from supplier to distributor to shop. So logistics challenges and generally short shelf life, a few weeks to a couple months. So that wasn't a solution either. We took a long time in the laboratory like we always do. <laughs> and we found a way that's really, really innovative, a process that weakens the cell wall of the planktons, or essentially pre-digests the cell wall of the plankton. And what it does then, it affects a very, very easy uptake for coral. Of course, mechanical filtration, or me <laughs> mechanical feeding, mechanical uptake. So what's really nice is you, it affects that big polyp expansion people love to see. Now, a cool little point of note is using fuel from Acavitra, that's 100% nutritionally complete but it's fun to combine with use the planktons also mm -hmm. for the mechanical feeding aspect. Okay, so. that's okay. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you. explaining that. Sure. Okay, we have one last very important job. We have to draw two winners for okay. the second packages uh, from the guys who shared our event sure. online. So we're going to ask Dory to and bring... It's a, it's a very nice package. I need to add to that. So it's uh, useful for, for your uh, aquatic plants and also for uh, running. So it uh, will help on the maintenance side. Pyrogen will do miracles. So I think it's a, it's a very great uh, uh, package. Great. Yeah, okay. So guys, I think I'm going to take this. And please, Brian, okay. choose the first one. Nothing in my hands. <laughs> I'm gonna try to mix them around uh, here. Let's go. And we're gonna pull oh, some. Oh, we have up. a lot of shares. I see. There's a lot there of gems in it. Okay. I'll I will let you, you pronounce that, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> so he's from Hungary. 
maybe I can show this. Uh, Banky Botond, Budapest. Yeah. yeah, congratulations. Here you can see. Okay. Is okay, so one, one of the one of the CKM boxes is goes to, yeah. to button and score one for Hungary. Yeah. Please. Okay, I'm gonna really whoop. Whoops. Well, there we go. Oh, you chose it. <laughs> That's random as we can be. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Herr Thomas Gassmann. Ah, he's from Germany. Germany. So we have a winner from Go Hungary Deutschland. And another one Congratulations. from Germany. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Being here. It was an honor to be here on behalf of CCAM. Yeah. And thank you, Victor, for explaining Thanks all the other stuff team. that's not CCAM. And then mm -hmm. we get to next week's show. Uh, we should talk about it. We will have a, a very special live event. It will be a special episode because we're going to have four teams rebuilding four of our aquariums live in our showroom. So there will be four teams for 60p aquariums, I think, but Victor knows that better. And uh, and we, we will have it all in live, so yeah, you can so join in and, 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 and live see event. the progress. Yeah. And please remember, all your hobbyists, if you have questions and just need simple hobbyist technical support, contact us at email is support at ccam.com. Support at ccam.com. We have a staff of biologists that are always there to help you. The sales manager came out of Brian. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so thank you guys. Uh, we're gonna see a short video. We're gonna see a short video about uh, last, uh, the last one of this um, Scapers Day we had, and we're gonna have the same one next week. Please check it out, and then see you guys next week. Bye.